Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The remarkable fall in renewable energy costs continues. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about what this means for energy systems and for South Africa. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The cost of new wind and solar energy projects continues to fall sharply. That's right. Since 2010, we've seen solar photovoltaic costs fall by a massive 80% and uh, wind by 40%, onshore wind, that's a more mature technology. And these are without a doubt now South Africa's cheapest new build option, even when you add the flexible generation that you need to back these two variable technologies up. And we're also getting much more uh, capacity and energy for every uh, dollar invested or rand invested in new renewable energy projects. So the International Renewable Energy Agency, for instance, did a calculation that back in 2010, when about 90 gigawatts of capacity was added in that year, took an investment of $210 billion. Last year, double that, about 180 gigawatts was added at a cost of around 253 billion US dollars. So we're getting twice the amount of capacity uh, for uh, only about a fifth more uh, of capital expenditure. So it's a major value for money improvement. And what we're also getting in many cases, in most cases, especially with the wind technology, where there have been major technology advances in terms of hub heights and blade lengths, we're getting not only more kilowatts or capacity, we're also getting more kilowatt hours for every dollar investment. So as Arena said this week, it's a better bang for our buck. What does this mean for electricity and energy systems and for investment? Well, it has major implications. You know, not only is it now uh, important to do this from a climate change uh, perspective, which is the next existential crisis facing the world after this pandemic, but it now makes pure economic sense to do this. It's not only the cheapest to build, it's the easiest and to build and uh, easiest to finance, which is important. Fossil fuels are finding it much, much more difficult to raise bank finance in particular. And even though there may be a slight slowdown in deployments this year because of the pandemic, this trend, I think, is now embedded. It's both got uh, economic virtue as well, and financial virtue, climate virtue, or, uh, and being clean. But also, it's a fairly jobs, in well, it's more jobs intensive than the traditional uh, conventional power stations. So it has major implications for the way we think about energy systems. There's going to be more variable renewable energy in the system. We're going to need flexible generation to, to, to support that in the form of maybe gas initially, but definitely back battery storage is going to come in. We're going to have much, we're going to have a lot of cheap, clean energy, electricity, which has implications for the energy system. Because if you can decarbonize your electricity system using renewables, variable renewables, and you have too much of, the, the, of that energy available at certain times of the day, there's potential to use that either to charge batteries, either in form of stationary batteries, or in terms of mo mobile batteries for your car. Uh, or you could also use that to convert water, for instance, into clean hydrogen through electrolysis. So it, may, it does not have electricity sector implications, it has potentially major energy sector implications. It also means that the structures that we've become used to in South Africa, we still have a vertically integrated electricity structure with ESKIM dominating generation, transmission and distribution with the municipalities at the distribution end. But that structure is no longer fit for purpose. Most countries have moved away from it. But we need to make a change to the structure that is fit for purpose for this transition. And uh, lastly, we also have to find a way to make this just, although, as I said, there's going to be more jobs in this uh, uh, renewables-based system than there is in the traditional electricity system, there's still going to be vulnerable communities and workers, particularly at the coal-fired power stations that need to be decommissioned and in those towns where the coal mining takes place. How is South Africa responding to this, if at all? Well, South Africa has a plan, and that plan is the integrated resource plan. And if you interrogate it closely, you see that uh, even though demand 
it, it, it caters for some demand growth, but mainly, uh, especially in this post-COVID low demand era, mainly what we need to do is replace our uh, existing coal-based system with something new. Now we're in a sweet spot, so we don't have a very new coal fleet. We have an old coal fleet. That coal fleet has served us well, even though it's been polluting and it has been dirty. It has served the economy well over the, over the number of, of uh, decades, but it, it has stopped doing that recently. And we are in a sweet spot as South Africa in the sense that our new build option, our cheapest new build option is uh, onshore wind and solar. And added to that, and amplifying that benefit is that South Africa has some of the best solar, as we know, resources in the world, and some of the best, lesser known, but wind resources in the world. So we can do this cheaper than most other countries. So it has major implications. And then, as I said earlier, there's more jobs in this future economy. It's more distributed. It's more patchy. It's not at the big mine or the big power station. Some of it's going to be installing rooftop solar on people's houses, on factories, on uh, uh, on uh, commercial buildings, but there are going to be utility scale wind and solar farms as well. And then obviously there's a lot of jobs in running the, the transmission and distribution systems. So all in all, it has major implications for South Africa and we have a plan which says that we're going to add a lot more renewables to replace our coal. We have to replace something like 11 gigawatts of coal over the next decade and a half. And we're going to start seeing those first coal-fired power stations start to be shut in the next couple of years, and that will accelerate. And then we need to take advantage one of this incredible resource that we have, solar and wind, but especially of this new world. So solar and wind is not only South Africa's new build least cost option, which makes it very low regret or least regret, no regret to build new solar and wind, but increasingly we're seeing a new tipping point where solar in particular, new solar, is now cheaper than existing coal. This hap is happening not only in South Africa, I think, which has cheap coal, but it's going to happen increasingly around the world with Irina uh, forecasting that up to 1,200 gigawatts of coal will be more expensive than new solar from next year. So there is this risk in South Africa that we choose technology options and lock ourselves into technology options um, as the focus seems to be at the DMRE around uh, new uh, clean coal, for instance, that is going to be a stranded asset. So I think we need to be very conscious of the world trend, the mega trend, and we need to be adapting and taking advantage specifically of South Africa's incredible resources in this area. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.